не надо, Катя. Я, я а, э, лучше... Помоши, скажи, с Новым годом. С Новым годом! It's January 1st. Today is January 1st. And the whole world is celebrating. The whole world is celebrating their new year. And according to them, today is the first day of the of the new year, January 1st. Uh, most people are really, really not informed as to how this you know year came about. This is the man that you need to thank. This is the man that is responsible for uh for your new year this is without this man you will have no new year his name is pope gregory his name is pope gregory he was a roman catholic pope a roman catholic pope and as you can see from his name your calendar your gregorian calendar was actually named after him because he was the one that invented he was the one that came up with the calendar that you're using today that's the reason why they named it after him. He's the one. He was the one that created it. It's called Gregorian calendar, and it was named after this man. So this is the man you need to thank for your year. But of course, it's a man-made calendar. It's a man. It's false. It's fake. Like everything that comes from Satan, it's all. It's fake. It's it's man-made, it's fake, it's not natural. I say it's not natural because our Heavenly Father, the Creator, gave us a calendar. And the moon is His calendar. The moon, He created the sun and the moon to for us to use it as our calendar. And this is the reason why the sun comes up in the morning and goes down in the evening. And the moon comes out, changes every night for 29 days, and then the brown, a brand new moon will come out. So that's how we got to have the Gregorian calendar that, we, that almost the whole world is using today without even questioning what they are doing. Uh, did you know that it was not even long ago, uh, Russia... Uh, used to use a lunar calendar. Russia used to use a lunar calendar and a lot of Muslim countries, they are still using a lunar calendar today. Even the Chinese, the Chi that's why you see the Chinese people celebrate their new year around March, you know, February, March, some somewhere around that, around that period of time. That's when the Chinese people celebrate their new year because the Chinese people are using a lunar calendar. Uh, for business, for business, transaction they use a gregorian calendar so they will be able to deal with the western people but the not traditionally up until this moment the chinese people are still using a lunar calendar because the lunar calendar is a calendar that our a natural calendar that our creator gave us when he created this world according to genesis chapter 1 verse 14 psalm 104 verse 19 um and in many other places, even in Psalm 81 verse 3, and many, many other places in 1 Samuel chapter 20, if you read the whole chapter of 1 Samuel chapter 20, you will see that the ancient Israelites was using the moon as their calendar. So, and the the calendar a lot of people like as i said don't even know the history of this gregorian calendar this calendar that the whole world is using today is uh was actually made in ad 1582 ad exactly approximately 435 years ago so 500 years ago if you say happy new year to somebody they have no idea what you're talking about 
They don't know what you're talking about. Just like if you say to somebody, Jesus Christ, uh, 700 years ago, they're just going to look at you like, what the, what the hell is he talking about? Or what the hell is she talking about? People have no idea what Jesus Christ means 700 years ago. Because 700 years ago, the word J or the letter J was not even around. The letter J was not around. There was nothing like Jesus or John or Jacob. 700 years ago, do your, do the research. Use your cell phone and do a research and find out the history of this world. The letter J was the last letter that was added into the alphabet. J, the true name of the person they call Jesus. His name is Yeshua. Yeshua, which means that Yah is salvation. And our creator's name is Yah. That's how you get Jeremiah, Isaiah, all this, all this, the, 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 you know, the, the, all these names of the prophet. That's why it says in, in Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, call by his name, his name is Yah. That's why we say hallelujah, which means praise Yah. Praise God. Hallelujah means praise Yah. By the way, that's the way he's being praised, praised in heaven right now. If you read in the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, you see that they're saying, they, they say, they are praising our heavenly father right now in heaven and they're saying praise Yah. Hallelujah, which means praise Yah. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Yeshua. These are all linked to the name name of our Heavenly Father. His name is not Lord. His name is not God. God is a title. So anyway, that's for a different presentation. But speaking of the new year, uh, this is a pagan satanic year. This man-made calendar that we're using. I am doing this presentation because we must, we must get rid of worshiping our heavenly father through this man-made calendar our ancestors did not worship our heavenly father through this man-made calendar our ancestors did not do that it was impossible christ or yeshua did not even keep the sabbath under this calendar that we're using today it was impossible because this calendar was not even around the calendar that the whole world is using today was was made in about 435 years ago in AD 1582 AD by a Roman Catholic Pope during the time of Christ during the time of Yeshua and the apostles they were using the moon as their calendar and you will see this in Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 I always recommend you read from verse 1 to verse 16. If you read the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 16, you will see that at verse 16, Paul was encouraging the early believers not to let anybody judge them when they keep the new moons, when they keep the Sabbath days. They were keeping the new moons. They were using the lunar calendar. It's impossible to keep the new moon which we were commanded we were commanded to observe the new moon day if you look at um uh, first chronicles or second chronicles chapter 2 verse 4 ezekiel chapter uh, chapter 46 verse 1 to 3 psalm 83 psalm 81 verse 3 if you look at these places you see that we were commanded to observe the new moon day the most of all of these scriptures is isaiah chapter 66 verse 22 and verse 23 you will see that we are going to be observing the new moon day. God himself, Yah, our creator, said that everybody must keep the Sabbath and everybody must observe the new moon day. Everybody must worship him on a new moon day in his kingdom, in his coming kingdom when Christ Yeshua returns. Everybody must observe the new moon day. We are not observing the new moon day today because we're using this man-made calendar. That's why we're not observing the new moon day. But we will do that in the future. So why not start now? Why not learn about it now? Why not, you know, get yourself educated about this information? So we have to abandon this man-made calendar and we have to worship our Heavenly Father based on his own calendar this gregorian calendar is a satanic calendar the whole world is going after this calendar by the way prophet daniel prophesied that the beast the fourth beast will think to change the time and the laws 
You see, that change came from the Romans, the Roman Catholic Church, which is pretty much the same thing with the Roman, you know, Roman Catholic Church, the Romans. So it, Daniel prophesied in Daniel chapter 7, verse 22 to verse 25. I'm sorry, Daniel chapter 7, verse 23 to verse 25. You will see that Daniel prophesied that the fourth beast will think to change the times and the laws. And they did. They did in AD uh, 1582. They did change the times and the laws. So this is not something that caught our Heavenly Father of God. He sent his prophets to prophesy that this will happen. And it did happen in AD 52, uh, 1582 AD. So... We have to switch back to that calendar. And who is this beast? Who is the fourth beast? The Romans was the fourth beast. If you read Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, you will see that in Daniel chapter 2, King uh, Nebuchadnezzar of, of the ancient Babylon, he had a dream. Uh, and he couldn't understand the, the, the dream. And Daniel came and explained the dream to him. There was going to be a fourth kingdom. There was gonna be there was going to be four four kingdoms that will rule the whole world. King Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon was the first kingdom. That was the first kingdom to rule the whole world. And then you got after him was the Medes and the Persians. That was the second kingdom. And then the Greeks, that was the third kingdom, and then the Romans, the fourth kingdom. So the the Roman people. The, the Westerners, the Romans, they are the fourth beast that was to rule the whole world. And they are sure do ruling the whole world. There is no argue about that. You can tell that the Romans have been ruling the world for the past uh, 2,500 years or about, 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 you know, about 2,400 years now. They have been ruling the world. Uh, but they're not going to rule forever because according to that prophecy in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, you will see that Christ, Yeshua, would destroy their kingdom. He is that that small uh, rock that will come and smash, smash their kingdom. So that's the thing. And you will also see this in Luke chapter 21 verse 24. So that's why they are doing what they're doing. That's why the, the whole world is following after the beast, the fourth beast. The Roman people, the Westerners, the Gentile Western people are the, the fourth beast that you read about in the book of Daniel chapter 7 and in Revelation chapter chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, Daniel chapter 7. And interestingly, in, in Revelation chapter 13, when he was describing this beast, he says that the whole world will marvel after it. The whole world will follow after this beast. And you look around you today, how the whole world is literally following Christianity. Almost the whole world is following Christianity. Even the Muslims that are not even uh, Christians, they are marveled. Read the, uh, Revelation chapter 13. If you read Revelation chapter 13, it describes how the whole world is going to follow after, after this beast. That beast is the fourth kingdom, the Roman kingdom, the fourth kingdom that was supposed to rule the whole world, but will eventually be destroyed by Christ, by Yeshua when he returns. The Roman people, the Westerners, they are that fourth beast. And I'm sure there's no way you can argue with me that the Westerners have been ruling the whole world. The Americans are the extension of, extension of Europe. The Americans came from Europe. Europe is an extension of, of Rome. European people are extensions of Rome. Rome is that fourth beast that was to rule the whole world. And in Revelation chapter 13, it says that the whole world will marvel after that beast and the whole world will follow after that beast. And you can use something like this so-called New Year to see that the whole world is literally following after that beast. In Japan, Tokyo, Japan, uh, China, um, not really that much with China, but Japan, uh, Africa, everywhere in the world, they are all celebrating the new year today, January 1st. They're celebrating the new year. Where did it come from? It came from Rome. It came from Rome. So this is a very good example of how the whole world is following after this beast by the way they dress, by their culture, by their everything, by their food, 
Everybody wants to be like the Romans. Everybody wants to be like the Westerners. Everybody is following after them. Even though our, our Heavenly Father tells us in, in, in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 2, not to learn the ways of the Gentile because the Gentiles will be destroyed. They will be destroyed. Most of them will be destroyed. If you read uh, Isaiah chapter 24 verse 1 to 6, Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 to 6, and uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, if you read Second Chronicles chapter 20, you will see how these Western countries are going to destroy themselves. You will see the example. Most of these Western countries will, will literally be destroyed because not just them, them and anybody who refuses to keep the laws and the commandment of God, anybody who refuses to keep the laws and the commandment in this book is going to be destroyed, completely be destroyed by a nuclear war that the Westerners are going to start, um, start among themselves. You know, North Korea, China, Russia, America, uh, Germany, all this country, these are Western, these are Gentile people and they will destroy each other. Read the entire book of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20 and you will see how it's going to go down. Our Heavenly Father have already told us in Isaiah chapter, chapter 24 verse 1 to 6, Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 to 6, uh, some parts of Isaiah chapter, chapter 13, uh, in Isaiah chapter 66 verse 16, um, in Amos chapter 9 verse 5, uh, I can go as Zechariah in Zechariah chapter 5, you know, I can go on and on and on and on and you see that there's going to be a nuclear World War 3. Those who will survive that nuclear World War 3 are those people that keep the laws and the commandments in this book. The people that keep the laws and the commandments in the scriptures, they are the ones that will survive that World War Three. Because our Heavenly Father says in Malachi chapter 3 that he will protect them. He will protect those people. Most of the world are going to literally be born with fire because they refuse to keep the laws and the commandments in this book. So we must go back and start keeping the laws and the commandments in this book. And we must distance ourselves from the ways of the Gentile, their so-called calendar, their food and everything, their worship days, which is Sunday and Saturday. We have to distance ourselves and we have to go back to the original part and use the lunar calendar and keep the Sabbath according to the moon and abstain from anything that is unclean and do everything that pleases our Heavenly Father. Everything that pleases our Heavenly Father. Yeshua Christ said in Matthew chapter 7 verse uh, 21 to verse 23 that when he comes back that people will come from everywhere. People will come and they'll be like, Lord, Lord, uh, we did this in your name. We cast out demons in your name, blah, 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 blah. And he will tell them to get away from me. I never knew you. You did all that, but you broke God's law. Matthew chapter 7. Verse, 20, verse 21 to verse 23. That's why we must go back to, to you know, and start keeping the laws and the commandments of our Heavenly Father. You will find His law in the book of Leviticus, in the book of Exodus, in the book of Deuteronomy, and in the book of Numbers. That's where you will find His law. And keeping His law is not that difficult. Keeping His law is not that difficult. We have been lied to. We have been educated and made to believe that keeping His law is difficult. It's not. It's not difficult to keep his law. It's really, it's not that difficult. The problem is that we have been taught that it's impossible. So, but it's not that difficult because uh, he said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, be ye perfect. So he expects us to be perfect. So if it's impossible to obey him, why will he tell us to be perfect? Abraham was blameless. Abraham kept all our heavenly father's laws and commandment. Uh, in Luke chapter 1, you see that Elizabeth, the mother of John, kept all the laws and the commandment. You know, so, you know, so we have to go back and start keeping the laws and the commandment of our Heavenly Father. I want to thank you so much for watching this presentation. And I have some more information in my channel. You can look around in my channel for other videos that will uh, give you more information about some of the things that I talked about. And if you want to learn more about the lunar calendar, I also have a link below this video. Uh, to my presentation I, I did. It's titled Lunar Sabbath Perfectly Explained. Lunar Sabbath Perfectly Explained. 
I thank you so much um, for this video. And I hope that you will go back and look at all this information and study all these scriptures yourself. And I hope that you will really start keeping the laws and commandments of our Heavenly Father. Because if you don't, you will not be saved. You will be destroyed. You will not be saved from this calamity World War III that is coming our way. Thank you once again for watching. Have a great day.